I like how S4 plays. Fuel prep, right, Craig, Ultra oh, Kill, kill. S4. S4 is uh, the god of Dota. It's a trap. <laughs> and it is, it's actually a trap because they came to check for it. They're gonna bring it down. Oh my game. He has started to play a different way and everybody else started to done go that. his way. No one has ever done that in the history of Dota. He's a, one of the most talented players I know and one of the smartest players I've ever met. Pull down and hold shot. The rocket from S4. Oh, cancel TP. He's out. He cancels the B. Puppy. Puppy. He's not going to be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, Coil on two. Just so steady TP as well. They are in now huge the fight trouble. It, but it's caught. Now if they go for the throw, it could be game. The Lions are doing it. They need a little more. The Bones to fall. Down in jeopardy. There's a glimpse. It's going to be their last stand. The Lions win. Gustav S4 Magnussen was born on April 1st, 1992 in Sweden. As the youngest, S4 was often left to watch his three older brothers play video games. All of our family has always been into PC and gaming in general. Started with my dad. I got into it and uh, Gustav sat behind me, like watched me playing games. But while he was watching, S4 developed a different kind of appreciation for the games his brothers played. He was watching from the outside, analyzing how they played so that when he finally got his turn, he was ahead of the curve. I remember when he was like five, six years old. Sometimes I woke up and I see the light under the door. Oh my God, I think not again. I opened the door and I said, Gustav, for God's sake, <laughs> turn off the computer. It's still time tomorrow. But as he grew older, S4's family came to realize that his dedication to games wasn't different than other kids' dedication to sports. We discussed it and said, well, maybe this is like a hockey player. If we let them do what they love and push them, then maybe this could work to be something great. But it was in Heroes of New Earth where S4 first made a name for himself. Yeah, maybe we're gonna have stuff from, oh, a nice disjoint from Magnus there. Alongside a slew of other future Dota 2 stars. Oh, anything. Oh, There's the oh, going in, taking him oh down as well. God. Great play by Pebbles there, and you can see him really using the fog to his advantage. He signed with Lions Esports Club and made it all the way to the NASL Season 2 Finals, but couldn't attend due to visa issues. Just a few months later, S4 switched to Dota 2 and joined Team Empire during a period of roster instability. Only months after joining, S4 left Empire to form a new team, the Tough Bananas, which was quickly signed by the Copenhagen Wolves. That is um, the Copenhagen Wolves. Hello, wave for the camera. Hi, mom. I'm on television. I'm a great esport esportsman. But that roster didn't find much success either, leaving S4 to find yet another new team. This time, he formed No Tide Hunter alongside Admiral Bulldog, Eternal Envy, Black, and Kizzle. After some success, Black and Kizzle left the team and were replaced by Loda and Ake. S4 didn't know it at the time, but he was finally on a team that was set to make history. At DreamHack Winter 2012, No Tide Hunter didn't drop a match in the group stage and beat Evil Geniuses 2 1 in the grand finals. Thanks in part to an unbelievable strategy concocted by S4 himself. Open for that one, and uh, wow, Admiral Bulldog giving a freebie. And here we go. Uh -huh. Game is on. <laughs> the bait a, is lame. There's a small blood patch where Admiral Bulldog it's a trap. used to be, and it is. It's actually a trap because they came to check for it. Now the stun. He goes out of mouth. They're gonna bring it down. Oh my games! Now on the beat is the Swedes. They pull something out of the bag, and beat is gonna go down as well. Oh no, my Lord. Tide Hunter! What a start! What a strategy coming out from Eternal the Envy. Back. No one has ever done that. No one has ever done that in the history of Dota. The now iconic Roshan bait single-handedly made S4 the captain of No Tide Hunter. How did you pitch that to your teammates? Like. Hey guys, we're gonna do this crazy strat. It requires one of us to die at the very beginning. Like, so what happened is we played the uh, grand finals in uh, 
not on the main stage, the game one. And then game two, we had to go to the main stage, but we had like a 30 minute break. So, so it was like, uh, what are we gonna do, guys? So we're down one game, you know? Yeah. We're playing against EG. And so yeah, we just came up with a strat to get some momentum, you know, into the game. You so know? you actually came up with that strat on the spot? Yeah. You didn't like see like it was a pub strat or anything like that. You were just like we weren't in the shower. No, we no, we were actually uh, to start off. We were trying to do a level one rush, mm -hmm. but then we came up with better ideas as we went on. But it wasn't the only thing about that tournament that propelled him into stardom. S4 was pioneering strategy, and no Tide Hunter were just outplaying their opponents. The line for the moment, Geo's on the run, still looking for this track, and it's giving one kill, double kill, triple kill, racking it up S4. Will it give him more fear? Spinning it on the way out, it's already another kill for Blink Up, Body Block, Ice Wall, and all team up, dual breath, right, Craig, all track kill, S4. No Tide Hunter took a Christmas break, but S4 kept playing. He participated in Beyond the Summit's Fistful of Tango's 1v1 tournament. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is time for something completely different. That's right. We are going to try our hands at our first ever 1v1 tournament. It's called A Fistful of Tango's. If you don't get the reference, I suggest you do some Googling. He placed second after a long loser's bracket run where he beat Kuroki, Korok, Sing Sing, and Sindarin, cementing his place as one of Dota 2's best young talents. Oh, he's not even gonna go for the rune. Maybe he's just faking. He's faking it. He's not actually going for the rune. What a fake from S4. He pretended to be going for the rune. He was actually waiting in the trees here. Incredible play from S4. Really smart play from him. He's gonna take the 2-0 victory. S4 coming through the loser bracket, taking out Cinderin. Once Cinderin the tournament circuit restarted, No Tide Hunter continued to do well, winning Star Ladder Star Series Season 5 in April. A bit of a tense set up by No Tide Hunter inside the base. No, they can't actually. Either they go for the GG or they go out through the top. They might just go straight for the GG, but Fnatic call it! Fnatic call it! GG. No Tide Hunter. They will take it out. Just after that, No Tide Hunter was signed to Alliance and the team went on an absolute tear. Oh. A bling, a crit, and probably a kill. S4 diving LGD in the shadow of their fountain. GG from Shao8, the Alliance are your G1 League Season 5 champion. Mode 7 gonna sprout himself in. S4 says, I don't like trees. Once again, you're dead. That's four in a row, an ultra kill at 16 minutes. Uh, oh my god, the base, uh, it's, uh, it's dropping down. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. GG, one plate is caught by Dignitas. Freaking base race with so much damage. And now Bulldog dives in, picks off Cinderin, and this looks like Mega's coming for the second. Bulldog didn't even care about that. About that solar stuff. GG is called, and Alliance, they will walk away with first place prize, $9,000. The team looked unstoppable. And Alliance, they take it, man. They bloody take Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. And they were. Chandra's gone back. He's going to be cleaned up again. Still no one has died. Are you kidding me? It's a perfect game. The perfect, spotless, pristine performance. Alliance hangs a goose egg on the opposition in the grand finals of a dream hack. Good to have this much momentum, or you guys are like, oh, may maybe we're, we need to, we're peaking very early when it comes to this kind of thing. I think it's good. Um, if, if you imagine being like a losing team, I don't think that would be feeling so good yeah. going into another tournament. It's a good tunnel. problem to have, I guess. Yeah. Alliance went 14-0 and 0 in TI3's group stage. Oh, Alliance, the team from Sweden, undefeated in the prelims. Then moved on to drop just one game in the upper bracket. Like, I always imagine how it would be for the players in the games. Like, how, what's the pressure and and stuff like that. But now getting to TI3, it's, I don't know, it's amazing. But Nadis Vincere put together an impressive run of their own and were slated to face off against Alliance in the Grand Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Finals of the International Three! In game one, Navi's puppy brought out several unique picks, but S4 stuck to the usual game plan and they ended up stomping Navi. Three dead, no track kills for Na'Vi, and they're not gonna get any. Make it four, Na'Vi down two to 11, yeah, and they're gonna okay. GG. 
The challenge was met with force as Navi took a quick game of their own. Poppy's still hunting. Stein on Ake. They don't even need the black hole. This is the most one-sided game that the Alliance has lost in this entire tournament. Despite the close series, Navi put Dendi on IO in the middle lane for game three. Hiroki will be playing your support Rubik. Dendi has swapped back to his wisp. Thanks to the pick, Navi had control of the early game, and Alliance were firmly shut down. In comes S4. He's found Funnick. In comes this the arm, as well. This arm against the bear. He's not doing anything. Funnick survived the initiation. Hobo the says, bear. I want the bear. Bear. I want your HS. Jeez, jeez. With that, Navi were just one game away from winning TI3 and the chance for a majority of the roster to carve their names on the Aegis of Champions twice. Both teams opened Game 4 with stable, well-rounded picks, but S4's ace came in the final pick with Night Stalker. And it's Spot. a Night wow. Stalker! On to Funnick! Last way up Loda, but Loda is still alive! He's still got a Satanic! A boast is hacked, and a boast will fall! Alliance, the Swedish Monsters, they force a Game 5! With Alliance tying up the series 2-2, TI3 already broke new ground for a TI Grand Final. This is the first time in TI history that we're going to a Game number 5. Creative drafts and ballsy plays characterize the series, but the best was yet to come. It all comes down to this. One more game, two million dollars on the table. Still Roshan stands. This time, Dendi wants to go in. While that's happening, Batrider's back to the pit. It's low. There's no black hole. Is there a way to steal this? S4 looking to leap. Rosh is low. Can he grab it in time? Dendi backs off. BKB's up. On the backside, Funnick falls. But EGM will as well. And now, Roshan, just with a sliver of HP. If Dendi gets this, if he gets this, they might not be able to stop S4, him. S4. Rosh, TP back in here. Any Fascists. There's a stun on Dendi! Dendi's dropping low! Roshan! Roshan! S4 picks up the Aegis! Alliance is still in Game 5! Alliance took the first Aegis at 21 minutes and stalled the game, waiting for Roshan to reset. Roche dropping fast, no reaction from Alliance, but they just give this up. They're still not committing. Lasso. Now, they found S4. He's the key to their success in these fights, and he does die. He's got a buyback, but it's too late. Roche is dead. Puppy moving forward. Aegis to Navi, and now it's time to see what they're really made of. As Game 5 neared its end, S4 showed up when it counted most and delivered a clutch Dream Coil giving Alliance the chance to close it out. He will get Claudius buyback. It's a crystal made him down, but the push comes top. It's a nice pick for Navi. It's not enough to they, put they this can't, game in their They grip. can't rush. They can't rush. They don't have enough damage. They don't have enough but time. Oh, oh cancel TP. He's out. He canceled the beat from B. Puppy, he's not going to be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, Coil on two. Yeah, so stand these TP as well. They are in now huge trouble. But it's caught. Now if they go for the throne, it could be game. Funnick's down! Alliance are doing it! They need a little more! A ghost to fall! Thrown in jeopardy! There's a glyph! It's going to be their last stand! Dendi's back, he's going to try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff! The hitting on the throne. There's no more glyph available! Down to about half HP! A quarter HP! Alliance surrounding from all sides! BKB! They They're won gonna this do round! It. They're going to do it! They're going to do it! The They're gonna do the it. Alliance wins! They win TI3! I always supported this game in career because I thought if he really believed in going far and he really aimed for it, he was the one brother that could actually do it. S4 stood at the very peak of Dota. Watching him playing in TI3 make me so proud. They are so good. And nothing could hold us back, you know. And we didn't see any struggles except in the grand finals, but that's. Another talk. <laughs> he was a key player in the most important game ever played. Thank you! Thank you! He was the man behind the million dollar dream coils. One more time for Alliance! After TI3, teams started to catch up to Alliance. 
Navi got their revenge on Alliance in a 3-1 Grand Finals at Star Ladder Season 7. There's no mana for this! TP's are coming oh, in! Look at that damage! The oh, spirit from Kuro GG! GG is gone! Navi, Navi wins! Alliance then fell out of MLG Columbus in the group stage, and the team only managed to pick up two LAN wins between TI3 and TI4. They weren't a terrible team, but they were a shell of their former selves. Welcome to the International. S4 won the 1v1 tournament in TI4, but it was the only victory he tasted all tournament. Yes, oh, he's gonna man fight. S4's got the boots, he can chase down Ferrari. Ferrari's gonna make a run for it. S4's gonna raise in two seconds time, gets the right click. Ferrari's gonna turn and fight. He misses both raises though. S4 gets the kill. He is your champion, Alliances. Returning from TI3 as champions, and S4 says, I'll start it off with a bang, takes the 1v1 championship here in Seattle. Alliance went 6 and 9 in the group stage, tied for 11. They did so good in TI3, probably they would do the same thing in TI4. Well, <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> TPD and Zai, BKB's going, where's those TPs coming from? Oh, the again, the black oh. hole! They got Loader, they got all of Alliance left! Alliance, over. they're out! There is no more! EG will take the Fortress and they will eliminate the defending champions in the group stage from the International 2014. We were like uh, trying too much to fix things in the team, like um, change things. Myself as a captain, I, I didn't feel like I was ready at that point in TI4. And I take a lot of responsibility for that. In the span of one year, Alliance went from unstoppable world champions to also Rams. S4 decided to try his luck elsewhere. He teamed up with his longtime rival, legendary Navi Captain Puppy, to help found Team Secret, alongside Fly, Big Daddy No Tail, and Kuroki. On the surface, Secret looked like a dream team. Every player on the team was one of the best in their position. However, in their debut at Star Ladder Season 10, they would get stomped by none other than S4's former team, Alliance. Now S4 outside of the base, it looks like he'll get clicked down. There's only one left, it's Fly. He's scooting back to safety, and safety he'll find. They'll turn their sights onto Puppy. And yeah, he gets picked off. This is just a massacre. There you go, GG well played. And Alliance, they just lap Team Secret around in their debut, 35 to five. It is a pretty one-sided performance here, Sindarin. Eventually finding their footing, Team Secret would go on to close out the calendar year by placing third, fourth at ESL1 New York, second at Star Ladder Season 10, third at the Summit 2, first at XMG Captain's Draft, and first at Dota Pit League Season 2. He's dead, buyback status is not there. Lasso, BKB, Phobos, and the GG is called, and Secret are going to be your Dota Pit Season 2 winners. Over the holiday season, the team lost Fly and No Tail, but replaced them with Arteezy and Zai, maintaining their status as a super team. Oh no, EG! They begin to crumble! Oh, good game. They're all down, they call it! It only takes G, 13 minutes! We're all done here! Secret <laughs> takes it. Wow. Simply put, Secret were incredible, winning trophy after trophy in the lead up to TI5. Retreat out. The buyback comes in from Arteezy. They're going for round two with PPD. Up in the air. He gets the echo slam on Arteezy, but it will not save his life. No buyback. GG! Secret will take the victory. makes four straight land wins for Team Secret, four land wins in 2015, the most of any team, and I think you put it absolutely perfectly, man. I don't care what team you root for, you have to root for that brand of Dota that Team Secret played tonight. What an impressive, incredible, historic performance to take home the ESL crown. but it all fell apart at TI. Arteezy, he's gonna be dropping here to God as he just fully commits for this kill, gets it in the end. Artur down for two minutes. VP, they're moving forward, GG, well played. Secret call it. VP have eliminated the fan favorites of this tournament. Secret placed second in their group with a 4-3-0 record, but fell in the bracket, losing 2-0 to E-Home and 2-1 to Virtus Pro. 
For all his hard work, S4 had another mediocre TI performance on his record. It wasn't terrible, yeah, but it wasn't a win. Very much. The light will go out on Team Secret. They have been eliminated and will finish 7th, 8th at the International 2015. One of the biggest shockwaves in Dota 2 history, potentially. Team Secret collapsed after the loss. Puppy was the only player who stuck with the org and rebuilt its roster by himself. For his part, S4 went back to Alliance, and over the course of the year, they rebuilt their TI3 winning squad. The team failed to put together any significant wins after TI, but in December, they picked up a massive win at World Cyber Arena 2015. That's the game right there. There's no way to come back from this for LGD. Alliance will take out the grand final. Three games to two. They won the first two. They played the hard road. Alliance will take the victory. They will take the tournament. They take WCA. Congratulations. Look at that reaction. Unbelievable. All right, now they're doing the... <laughs> <laughs> they leave S4 out S4's just, just like, what's, what's like, going on, like, guys? Let me die. Let me die. And just a few weeks later, at Star Ladder I-League Season 1, the old alliance swept TI5 champions, evil geniuses, in the finals to take first place. Back on him. The death ward's going, but it's oh, no. not critical damage. Alliance just back away, and they rotate on the top. The Megas are coming out, and GG! What Alliance is that? Things started looking up for the old heroes, but the nostalgic wave didn't last long. Alliance didn't find any more wins that year. They attended every Valve major and qualified for TI6, but were swept out of the bracket stage by Ehome and Fnatic. But there it is. GG, well played. Fnatic have done it. They will start off our day with a 2-0 victory over Alliance, eliminating them from the International 2016. While S4 was struggling, some of his old secret teammates had formed OG. S4 joined, reuniting with Fly and No Tail, and switched to the offline. At this bottom tower, it's been so long, the fortifications already back up, pulled out, and hook shot! The rocket from S4 gave him the perfect vision in the tree line. He already kind of played this role before, where he would be the temper controller and the guy making things happen, so it kind of fit for him to go to the offlane. OG looked good as the season started, but they came into their own at the Boston Major, where S4 won his first ever Valve Major. Time being, they'll run, they'll try and hide. Matter of caught out again by Jarex, jumps forward with the boulder smash. And GG is called. Your champions are OG. No tell, it's like these, they've won three majors. It's an incredible feat. At Finimo, giving us a real, real, absolute cracker of a final series game. For S4, a player who seemed past his prime, OG represented a shot at redemption. S4 shifted to the offlane, Ana, a new, relatively new mid on the scene, but the core team Sly and No Tail have just seen countless championships. And OG kept up their momentum by taking first place at the Kiev Major. West Fountain, and here they come. Stampede, jump forward, catch out Lil. The rocks will drop, but they just don't have the damage to repel OG. Virtus Pro call it. GG. OG will be claimed for time. Dota 2 Major winners here in Kiev. S4 found redemption on OG. He found a team that was what Secret was supposed to be. Unbelievable. <laughs> this game. <laughs> oh, the love. OG placed 7th, 8th at TI that year. And while they've looked strong since, the team isn't favored to win TI8. But in Dota 2, TI is just about the only tournament that matters. There are important events outside of TI, but none can match its prestige. None have its multi-million dollar prize pool. None can award you the Aegis and the title of best in the world. And S4 wanted to be known as the best. He knows what it means, what it feels like to stand at the top. And he won't rest until he's felt it again. Nah, I get it when he comes into the room too. It's like, he's a TI winner and then all the girls, they just go there and I'm there. And <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.